Grandma came down with the anthrax, you know. Glad to hear it. The Postal series of video games, created by Running With Scissors, is a series all about innovation. The first was a mission-based isometric shoot with very little story and a dark, somewhat humorless tone. My experience with it is very limited. Postal 2, on the other hand, is a free-roaming FPS on the Unreal Engine. It lightened the tone and aimed at more a parody of American culture, rather than just an out-and-out -out murder fun. And lastly, Postal 3. This game attempted to break new ground by being co-developed by three separate studios and being absolute shit. I blame Glenn Beck. I blame Glenn Beck. Running with scissors have since dubbed it Russian Postal, or Akella's Postal spin-off, to distance themselves from it. A wise move, if any. With the poor reception Postal 3 received, Running with Scissors said they'd try harder for quality in future and they released a Postal 2 Complete pack on Steam. Now, I'm unsure if that's directly correlated, but honestly, who gives a fuck? This is the version we'll be using for the review. It has both Postal 2 expansions, the multiplayer Share the Pain, and the single-player continuation Apocalypse Weekend, plus their respective patches and base game additions. I'm not going to talk about these for any great length of time, because I find them really boring. This version also has more resolution options, which for some reason reset every time I opened up the game again. It's a minor niggle, but that does mean all my Monday footage is going to be stretched because I didn't re-record it. I'll deduct a mark from the game, even though that was entirely my fault. I wrote it in pen. So, now we're done with that. Let's actually focus on Postal 2 itself. The game was released in 2003 and stirred up controversy kind of quickly. Due to the fact the game was a tad over the top. HOLY SHIT! In the name of Allah, prepare to die, infidels! Yeah, like that. Quite a few retailers refused to stock it as a result, and plus the fact that it was from a studio that wasn't very well known, it never really gained widespread appeal. It did get a cult following, though. I'm not sure why people complained about the violence. The back of the box says it's only as violent as you are. Kinda negated by the fact the game has a good degree of effort put into the various ways of violence. So what is Postal 2? Postal 2 is a game where kicking grenades is a much better strategy than throwing them. Postal 2 is a game where I can stop a robbery, then carry it out on my own, then I can apologize. How can I help you? I'm sorry. And on the way out, I'll kick their cash points. Postal 2, lastly, is a game which doesn't have a unique hitbox for Gary Coleman, but it does have a system where you can distract cops with donuts, which also takes into account whether or not you had previously pissed on them. Kick ass. So, what's the story in Postal 2? Well, you see, after murdering the entire population of Tucson, Arizona, Postal Dude and his bitch, yeah, she's titled that, moved to the town of Paradise, Mr. Dude having been offered a job at running with scissors due to the fact he'd likely fit in. However, someone does a background check and realises he has no previous experience in game design, further cementing his aptitude at the company. He's fired the moment he arrives regardless for no good reason. Nothing personal, man, but you're fired. Come on, then a everyone, violent video game protest me. group busts into the room, sees the dude in the building, and they become an enemy of his. So after cashing your first paycheck, and your only paycheck, do you then spend the game job hunting? Nah, you spend five days in the dude's shoes, doing menial tasks that typically go awry. At the start of each day, you get a checklist of things to do around town. You do them. I hope the bitch appreciates the trouble I went to. Something typically dies in the process, then you go home to your trailer. For instance, you go return a library book. Let's burn some books. Then a book-burning protest group busts into the library, sees the dude in the building, and they become an enemy of his. You go to your Uncle Dave's cult compound. The apocalypse happens, but being a live protest group sees you on the planet and becomes an enemy of everyone. You fight or run your way home, realize you forgot bitch's ice cream, and then you kill yourself. If you want sequence break the game for speedrunning purposes, there is a readily available dedicated kill yourself button. The story is pretty lightweight. It's really just there to facilitate getting you into slightly odd situations. Oh my god, I'm the damn gimp. 
so that you can then work your way out of them through a special blend of psychology and extreme violence. It doesn't want to teach you anything, or really even tell a tale at all. It just wants to make things progressively more murderous, and for that, I commend it. So, how's the gameplay? It's alright. Controls are a little different than your standard first-person shooter fare. If you're like me, you may expect the R key to reload. In this game, it whips your cock out. You may think that's inconvenient, but your piss is an invaluable tool for progressing through the game. It can be used to distract foes. Mother cry! You sick! Uh, cry! Uh, you sick! Mother cry! Uh, cry! Uh, cry! Mother! You sick! Ba mother! Fuck! You sick! Mother! You sick! Ba uh, you sick! Cry! Mother! You sick! Ba cry! You sick! Ba Put yourself out when you're on fire, and you'll be on fire pretty often. Plus, you never need to reload anyway, so keep it a close keybind. You may want to rebind the keys for switching your items, though. They're a tad curious. Most of the game you'll be wandering around the town of Paradise, walking between story objectives, exploring, or just generally fucking around. Really, the town itself doesn't actually offer much to do, except find hidden nooks and crannies filled with items, or bad jokes. The environments in this game are typically pretty bland all around. The level design is really open, and due to how samey quite a few places can look, it can be hard to navigate at points. This is lessened by the Next. map screen and the fact that most areas have a landmark of sorts but it doesn't help with the indoor environments. Due to the dullness of the overworld map, it can make travel between objectives seem like a chore after a while, especially on later days where objectives are scattered all around. I mean, look at this shit. That said, I am surprised by some of the hidden areas, and even though I've played this game for years, I still found new things. Like this cat garden that you have to access by jumping across power lines. You may also occupy your time in paradise killing things, and invent new ways of killing things. My favourite one, I call this one the daisy chain. You pour a trail of petrol, you light some grenades atop it. And then you make amazing things happen. It's a tad impractical, mind. So by wandering around, breaking into places, you'll find new weapons and equipment to aid the dude against whatever enemies he ends up making. You've got your standard handgun, shotgun, machine gun. Yeah, those are all nice and practical. Shooting feels fine. Weapons that I imagine should feel pretty powerful do indeed feel pretty powerful. Even if certain foes can take a pretty good beating. Oddly enough, this complete version started with aims moving on, which made aiming feel kind of slow and rigid. And alongside the standard foray of guns, you've got wonderful things such as scissors, with which you can pull off some revolver assault type shit. You know, just with scissors as opposed to revolvers. Petrol can, used to make things shooting at you too distracted to shoot at you. And lastly for weapons, so as not to give away everything, a napalm launcher for speeding up the distraction process. As for items, we have wonders like an upgradable radar, health pipes to which you can be addicted. This can't be good for me, but I feel great. Refuel takes about 10 minutes, so I've got no idea what drug addicts are complaining about, really. Withdrawals a bitch. Plus there's catnip. Don't bother using it to gather cats, dear viewers. Smoke it. Postal Dude also has the ability to kick. Use this as a weapon, great as a door opener. It's become a habit of mine. Plus you can use it to play football with human heads, just in case you need to further occupy your time. The game also has some degree of stealth, but the system is incredibly lightweight. In most circumstances, enemies spawn knowing exactly where you are anyway. It's only practical purposes gathering cats by crouch walking and catching them unawares. You see, cats serve as silencers, which don't aid in stealth much either. I think they do increase weapon damage though. Some would consider this a bit fucked up. The town of Paradise itself starts off pretty quaint, save for the quirks of the locals. I think I need a drink before breakfast. What? And the Al Qaeda base behind your trailer. However, as you beat certain objectives and as the week goes on, the town of Paradise becomes more and more dangerous. As said earlier, certain missions make groups of NPCs attack the dude on site after completion. Doesn't take a genius to guess what'll happen the next time one of them sees me. The map screen logs enemy groups with some terribly nice Polaroids. They typically can be ignored, and the police will help you if they attack first. Plus, Ryan with Scissors employees will always aid you, and they are some of the toughest bastards in the game. Near the end of the week, as the town starts heading for destruction, the army moves in alongside the regular police force. And certain areas become infested with Osama shooting at you, and only you, from the rooftops. So I hope you like outrunning homing rockets. If the amount of challenge isn't precisely to your taste, you need not worry. You have 13 difficulty modes to choose from. Aggressive is pretty comfortable, however the three most interesting are Lieber mode, the easiest difficulty, which replaces nearly all enemy weaponry. With what you ask? Shovels. 
It leads to some amazing sights. Drop it, asshole! And the gun damage is weakened so much that even enemies with guns can't do shit. It's interesting, but overall it's not that fun. Next up we have Insano, which gives everyone a random weapon and all damage is doubled. And I believe the extra damage works both ways, so everything dies quicker. This difficulty is amazing due to how much of a crapshoot it can be. Certain fights can be made far easier because now your opponents are wielding scissors, and some conflicts even solve themselves. This is a stick up! Don't move and you won't get hurt! This makes for a fun, if incredibly unbalanced game. Lastly, we have They Hate Me, the hardest difficulty. Everyone who is armed will attack you on sight. Double damage still applies. This mode even comes with a warning label. Let's compare me picking up my paycheck on aggressive. Nothing personal, man, but you're fired. But I just started yesterday. <laughs> Your check is on my desk. Go get it. And now let's see it on They Hate Me. How about some of this? The differences are pretty big, I'm sure you'll agree. The variety of difficulties is interesting. Only those three make any major differences to the game so far as I've seen. They do add some replayability, however, and Insano alone is a blast. Also, weapon damage seems to change somewhat on all difficulties. It may just be me, but lower difficulties therefore feel comparably sluggish. To finish talking about the challenge this game presents, and heartening back to when I mentioned that the game is only as violent as you are, no kill runs are absolutely possible, as completing your objective never actually requires you to attack anyone. The game never puts you in a situation that you cannot simply just run through. Killing certainly makes things easier, mind. The game does have a taser to aid in non-lethal runs, and items like catnip will help you bypass enemies. Also, several missions can be completed simply by paying for goods rather than killing for them. Like the first mission where you can queue up and buy milk, or murder everyone who gets between you and your stolen milk. You're gonna be fucking kidding. I've never attempted this, however, because the idea doesn't interest me all that much. It seems like it'd just be a test of memorizing item pickups, and even then you can negate that part of the challenge because every time you exit and re-enter a map, all item spawns reset. Beat the game this way, though, and you do get a special message. You can find it on Wikipedia if you're so inclined. So while the game does account for you being a pacifist, a lot of the meat of the game has been put into violence. The sound design of this game bears mentioning. I've shown some clips of NPCs conversing and that is certainly a sight. It's awful, but it's funny enough that I consider it something that works in the game's favour. Forty dollars. You've also heard a lot of the dude quipping. He has tons of dialogue, but that doesn't mean he won't repeat himself, sometimes within the span of seconds. welfare reform. Now that's what I call welfare reform. There is no non diegetic sound in the game, so background music only appears in appropriate areas. However, background noise is near enough omnipresent, and it's almost always a low machine hum. Some industrial areas have it even louder. There is bird noise on certain maps alongside this. Simply put, the background noise is present enough to be noticeable, but it's not too overbearing so as to be a deal breaker, or really, really annoying. For me, it did eventually just fade out of mind. The heartbeat sound when highlighting buttons on the menus is bloody irritating, though. So to wrap it all up, I would recommend Postal 2, at the very least as a curiosity. I've had a lot of fun with this game, and I've replayed it a good number of times. It's not a long game if you're just playing through the story, but messing around, exploring, finding hidden goodies, and certain unlockables give the game a surprising amount of depth. I've actually left certain features and events out of this review because I do think people should be surprised by the game first hand. As for whether the game is well designed and well thought out is up for debate. It just strikes me as a game that the developers had a lot of fun toying around with. And if you enter the game with the right mindset, you may feel the same way. I've also not talked at any great length about whether or not the game is offensive. It can certainly appear that way at a cursory glance. I do give the developers enough credit to believe that they were taking the piss out of American cultural perception, particularly that of the news media, by making their representation of certain controversial topics way over the top and not just done in poor taste. And that is such a wanky sentence that I do want to hurt myself. It's evident that Running With Scissors have a sense of humour about themselves at the least, shown by the fact they printed negative reviews on their Fudge Packs box cover. So with enjoyable if buggy gameplay, a great selection of weapons inspired by Hit Game The Ship, an expansive town with lots of little nooks that may be a touch bland, and a protagonist unlike any other. What the? Ah, For better or worse.
I give Postal 2 a 43. Oh yeah, there's some first-person platforming too, um, forgot to mention that. It's kind of crap though.